everybody. Welcome to Working Horses with Jim. I'm Brenda, and this is Jim. And we're here today at Paul Smith's College again. Jim's back to logging after a little bit of time off for Thanksgiving and things. So it was really great to come down here and see all this snow. I'm excited for Christmas, so I'm hoping to pick up a few greens today while I'm here. And anyways, let's go back to um, a few minutes ago and um, see, see what happened then. Jim has a few things he wants to explain about this tree. Hi everybody, how's everybody today? So here's this tree that I wanted to explain a few things about. As you can see, there's a big X on this tree. And pardon my voice, I've had a bit of a cold. Thanks, the grandkids kind of brought me. Those grandkids are wonderful, aren't they? They always like to bring you something. Yeah, this one was a, this time they brought me a cold. Anyways, um, so I hope you can hear me. Um, so this tree is an X tree. X tree, it kind of depends on some jobs. I'm not exactly sure why the forester did put an X tree on this particular tree because this is a job that this, the, of course we're at Paul Smith's College and this is a job that the kids at the school were actually gonna do, but they just haven't got to it. So John, the forester put me on this job while I'm waiting for the other big job to dry up and, uh, or freeze up. And so, um, I'm not really sure why he marked it as an X tree. Generally on a job, when you have an X tree, <coughs> it means you can either, depends on the situation. Sometimes the forester wants you to definitely cut the tree down, but you don't have to harvest it, take it out because it's not very good for some reason. Or it may, sometimes you can cut it if you want or leave it if you want. Um, so I am gonna cut this tree. As you can see, there's two big limbs, two, it goes up just a little ways and it branches off into two limbs. And so it's a very poor quality tree, but I'm gonna put it down anyways. And uh, so let's get to cutting and we'll see how it goes. So I've been um, busy gathering some greens. Jim has been busy meanwhile cutting up this double pronged tree. There's, he was saying there's quite a lot of footage in this tree. He's gone to get the horses and they're gonna snake it out of here. I'm happier than a, I don't know what, but it's just so great because all I'm doing is getting the uh, downed things that um, Jim has already cut. I'm not cutting any trees down, but it's just, you know, there's all I could want here and Abby wants some for some wreaths at her house too. So here's a good view of the tree. Here comes the horses and Jim. Mm-hmm. 
my safe over here. Okay, I've got that long piece headed that way, but it's a little bit too long to make around my corners. So I'm gonna cut off probably two logs and leave the top piece there. I also have a nice 10 foot log right here. And this piece here is all dead. So there's just nothing in here. This whole big one? Yep. Oh, too bad. That's why the X is there. Yep. So anyways, I'm gonna finish limiting that up and cut a couple logs off that and then I will run that down the landing and then come back and get the rest of it. Ooh. So as you can see, Jim is using your regular old tape measure today because he broke the um, tape on the one that he usually uses. And he's got it coming, but he sure misses that. I also wanted to apologize. We had our GoPro all set up and ready to go today. Brought everything. Forgot the SD card that, re that you have to put inside to record everything. So doing this with a camera and we know it doesn't pick up sound as good or the surrounding area as as good but hopefully this turns out okay sure did leave a hole in here now that it's down So as you can see, I am using my smaller saw today. This is a 572 Husky. I like this saw, it's quite nice because it's quite a bit lighter than my 372s, which is the ones I normally you would run. Um, but uh, I something went wrong on my good 372. I thought it was just the switch and I took it home and I grabbed a switch off an old junk saw that I think is okay and it still had no fire. So I gotta take it to the shop 
and see what they can find out with that. Maybe the second switch is shot too, I don't know, but more than likely it's a broken wire or something out from there. Um, so I gotta get that fixed. But a lot of ways I like this lighted 5762 because for lemon especially, it's just a lot lighter saw, but it just does not have the power that the 372 has. Bill's been having a nice snack of beech leaves over here. As you can see, we are super close to the landing. So the horses are having it pretty easy today, actually. Not a very long skid. Jim said that he's almost done with right here, right? Aren't you done almost and you gotta do another trail? Yeah, I have, I have one more tree right up there that I gotta cut. And then this trail is all done. So I will go from here and I need to make a new trail up through there on this side of the lot. And yeah, that's, this is gonna be it for this side. I got a couple little small ones here beside the landing to go, but um, that's the gonna be the bulk of it from this piece. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I don't want him working too long and too hard today. He's just not feeling the greatest. I think he feels better than yesterday, but I don't want him to overdo when he's in the woods for sure and he said he wouldn't So this is 290 board feet in that one log right there, good sized pieces. And then add this one to it, this is a, a 12 footer. So another, another, what did I say was that? 290. Another 200 more here, no I can't write. And 180. Um, 290 and 180, 170, 370. Um, have you ever explained to everybody, because people have asked how you get paid. So how do you get paid on this job? Okay, on this particular job, and this is kind of unusual, but the, the, the Postmas College is actually, um, paying the trucker and finding the markets for the log. So they just strictly paying me a price per thousand to cut and skid it to where the truck can get it. And you don't want to tell everybody what you're getting per thousand. No, because it kind of gives people a false sense of whatever, because every job is so different and every area of the country is so different that it's just, no, I'm not going to bother saying what I get per thousand, but that doesn't really matter. It's, it's a price per thousand that I get to do the job. Right. And and as, for example, a thousand is a thousand board feet. And that, those two logs right there are 370 board feet. So I would need three times that to get my thousand board feet. And what you get paid for a thousand yes. board feet. I know that people are just wanting to get a feel for 
how much you have to get to make a living at this, but that's all we're gonna share. To make a good living in horse logging, at least for myself, um, I I strive to put out at least two thousand feet every day. Um, I, I I shouldn't say that. I should, I should say I strive to put out at least three thousand feet every day, and I usually in between two and three thousand feet every single day. Sometimes I get as high as the best day I ever did was years ago when I was a young man, and I got fifty five hundred board feet out, cut and skid all by myself. All by yourself. Yeah, but there again, uh, just a right situation. And I'm sure had I tried, and even if I had scaled them up, there would have been days that I might have been done better than that. But uh, uh, quite often I don't scale up every day, although I have been lately here. And lately I've been putting out a little over 3,000 feet every day, which is, in my mind, great. Perfectly happy with that. I can make a good living, a real good living at that. Is that doable for people who want to horse log? That's not doable for somebody starting out. I can pretty well guarantee you that. But yes, I'm doing it, so of course it's doable. Well, I know, but you've been doing it for a long time. Another thing to think to think about, and, and I'll maybe go into more detail on even this situation. Uh, I have had people help me before, and I can I can have if I have one person help me, I generally do not double my production. I can usually do better alone than not do better, but I can't having a second person does not guarantee at all that you'll double your production. I do remember a couple. Uh, this is quite a few years ago, but I had two guys working for me and I had a third horse in the woods so I had the team on the cart like this which is what I was doing and I was skidding the logs to the landing and then I had a guy doing all the cutting and then a guy with a single horse bunching them in the woods and we would put out consistently 6,000 feet a day um, but there again I'm doing 3,000 feet now and that's with three people and not alone so it, like I said you don't even though you have more help doesn't mean you make more money sometimes sometimes working alone actually does work best because i can take out really big hitches because the horses get to rest while i'm doing the cutting so there's a lot of a lot of different ways to look at it so if you think about being a horse logger um, i'm just trying to show you what i'm doing so that you can get an idea of what could be done uh, what about since we're on the subject of, of having people work um how do you a lot of people say you shouldn't work alone because it's dangerous being out here. Obviously it is. But what do you say about that? As a general rule, you're more apt to get hurt when you have somebody helping you than if you're working alone. Just because it's just the way it is. You're, 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 you've got to work for a long time together before you're really good at working together. And if you're not really good at working together, you can actually get hurt worse. Well, I can see how you don't. It's hard to know where to be and when and what you got to watch exactly. the other person all the time. Exactly. More, more things to talk about in upcoming videos. Big rocks in the trail.
So he said he was going to hitch onto this other log, too, and pull them out both together. As you can see, it's quite brushy in here. I don't very often do this, but it's going to take me a few minutes to get done what I need to do. So just by throwing a lead rope on here and tie her to this tree, uh -huh. we'll settle her down. Although she's not bad at all in it. Her stuff. No. It's snow on their ears. Billy, you didn't get enough lunch? See, this is what we have it's not quite completely cut right there in that corner so i have to cut a little more to release that <laughs> I just wanted to show everybody, ladies, baby bump. Can you see it? Woo! Good, there goes another tree. I just noticed it this morning when I was um, brushing her that she's really starting to spread out a little bit. Well, we hope you enjoyed the visit today. It sure has been a beautiful day. I'm glad I came down to see this little winter wonderland. And we hope that you will continue to um, watch our journey on Working Horses with Jim. <laughs>